Hi, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO and founder of Owner Insight, and welcome to the Owner Insight podcast. You know, over the last several episodes, we have been highlighting women in construction, and I'm super excited to continue this path forward with today's guest. You know, we've utilized these episodes as an avenue to highlight some real trailblazing women. Today's guest is actually no exception to that. Introduced to me by one of our prior guests, Gina Kankanga, uh, Melanie Rainey is the president and CEO of Texo, the largest contractors association in North Texas. She is a architect by trade, in fact, worked for the Beck Group and left that organization about eight years ago to join Texo and has risen through the ranks where she is today now president and CEO. When she and I connected, we just had a genuine connection and a really great conversation about both of our commitments to helping young women and women in career change look at the construction space as an opportunity to pursue that for their career path point forward. This has so much potential and so much opportunity, and I can't wait to talk with Melanie about the opportunities that are out there, what she sees through the association, what the association is doing to support this as an avenue to educate women about the construction space as a career avenue, and uh, just excited to have her join us for the Owner Insight Podcast. So let's dive in. All right. Well, hey guys, uh, with me today is Melanie Rainey. I am so grateful, Melanie, that you agreed to join the Owner Insight Podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah. Well, you know, we've been doing this Women in Construction series because I'm super passionate about raising the profile of the construction space as a career avenue for women. And we've highlighted some amazing women. And obviously, Gina Kankanga uh, introduced us. And uh, you and I kind of hit it off. And I'm like, I know we've got to get you on the podcast. I mean, you're leading an amazing association. You've got a very um, you know deep experience in the construction industry as an architect by trade. And uh, working for the Beck Group before joining the association, but I'd like to get some sense of kind of what motivated you to you know pursue that in school and and why the construction industry you know has, has kept your attention all these years. Sure. So I I growing up actually didn't even know about construction. I think I was the stereotypical kid who, when you think of construction, you think of you know a hammer and a nail, or you see rebar being bent on the side of the road. That's what I thought construction was. And so I actually was pursuing structural engineering degree um, to begin with. And then I ended up changing uh, after a few days in that. I realized this is probably not what I need to be doing. (laughs) I love math, but not that much math. Uh. So I actually switched to architecture. And about two years into architecture, um, I realized that there was always this group of men uh, that were trying to figure out how you actually put the building together. And that was the piece that really intrigued me in architecture school was, yes, you can create this great design, but if you have nobody that builds it, what good is it going to do? And so I actually started becoming drawn to construction during college when I realized that construction management was an actual degree um, and there were lots of paths to get into the construction industry. And so during architecture school at OU, I, I, I kind of fell in love with the design build delivery method. Where yep. you design it and then you move out onto the job site to build it. And so that's how I ended up at Beck. And I did an internship where you um, got to see the job from design through the building phase. And through that, I just fell in love with construction. And so now I'm at the association. <laughs> <laughs> that that's awesome. So as you as you were in school, I'm curious, uh, were there a lot of uh, influences, female influences that were helping guide that as a direction? I know you mentioned, you know, looking at it from the industry perspective, there, there were a lot of men, it's obviously, a, you know, historically been a male dominated industry, but right. I'm curious if you had any um, professors or, you know, professional influences in that early stage of, you know, whether it's at the university level or in those early years at, at the Beck group um, that sort of took you under their wing and kind of helped you. Yeah, I've always had um, a good amount of, of strong females in my life. Probably first and foremost is my mom that just told yeah. me, you know, you can do whatever you want to go do, which is awesome. And then in college, I did have several professors in the construction management group that that were females. There were, I think, two of us in our graduating class of 75 for wow. construction management was my minor. Um, and so not, you know, not many. And then when I went to Beck, I would say probably... 10% of the technical people at Beck are, are, are female. And so that was a larger number than usual. So it's always, I think it's always been my mentality too, of not really worrying about that. 
I'm going to do what I love and what I'm passionate about. And love that. we're going to figure it out along the way. And which has impacted what we do now at Texo because it, it, it's just different being a female in a very male dominated yep. world. What you experience daily on a job site, what you experience in meetings is different. And sometimes it's just nice to have those people that you can bounce thoughts off of and ask, you know, this happened to me. How do you think I should respond? Um, and so we try to create a strong group of females that are a support system and a tribe that anytime you're going through something difficult, um, I always am a fan of you should always have a mentor and you should always be a mentor. And yep. so how can you how can you create this strong group of people that are better together? I love that. So, you know, it, Tell me about the group that you've kind of assembled there. Was that something that you organized or saw a need for it? Was there somebody that sort of was the, you know, kind of the ringleader to get that going? And, and you know, what what do you all hope to walk away from and you know, aside from just the support factors in terms of coming together and, and uh, you know, that collective wisdom? I, I think half of it is just talking about it like we're doing today. You know, <laughs> most people don't even think of young females typically don't even think about construction. So half of it is just the awareness of, hey, there's a ton of STEAM careers out there for women that we need awareness and exposure. And so half of what this group is doing is really just talking about construction. So we have a couple of different groups. We have a women's forum, which meets several times um, several times a year, and they do all wow. sorts of activities. And what I love about this group is that it's not just for women. I mean, you're going to talk about issues that women face in construction, but men are encouraged to come to the events. And, and I think exposure and talking about it is how we're going to actually see a difference. Um, and it's always just nice to know that you've got a, a supporting cast around you. And so that's really what this group is about is, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. If you invest in people and you invest in people's lives, both personally and professionally, a rising tide raises all boats. So yeah, when we're all pushing each other to be better, this industry is going to be elevated um, to a, a, a much higher level than what it is now. And that's, we are starting to see actually a difference in, in people coming to our events for the, specifically the women's forum. You know, we used to probably run about 25 and now we have a hundred plus at all of our events. So it's wow. really exciting to see um, just the momentum and encouragement that, that people are seeing to come talk about tough topics. That's fantastic. Well, I, you know, one of our most recent guests is a project manager out of the Florida area, Esther Lambert, that I've known for a long time. And she said, even though the industry seems, you know, very big, it's actually a pretty small industry. Once you've established and built that network, it's amazing how years past, you know, initial projects or interactions, how people remember how you treated them, how you worked and conducted yourself and how you know, what a tight knit, you know, both fraternity and sorority that there really is within the industry. How have you seen that within your, um, within the space, you know, for the contractors that you work with and in the organizations that are involved in the association? And then what do you think we could be doing better to promote that? I, uh, it's funny. It, it's just humans, right? And human behavior is always, you're going to remember those interactions and you're going to remember. Good what, and bad, right? Yeah, right, absolutely. right. Whether yep. they're good or bad. And so, yeah. Every one of those interactions is a reflection on our industry. And I would say there is definitely a, a stereotypical old school construction mentality, yep. which um, there's a group called the Lean Builders and they do a training. And during the training, they always ask, how many of you have had a hard hat thrown at you? And I mean, one of the first job sites I was on, I, was, I had a hard hat thrown at me. Did um, I deserve it? Maybe. I mean, probably. I didn't really know anything. <laughs> But that was his form of communicating with me was throwing a hard hat. And yep. I would say that is the old school, probably what people think about construction. And it's not that anymore. Do you have some bad actors? Of course, every industry does. But we have really made a shift. And I think that is what we're trying to tell the world yep. is that shift. And so every single interaction that people have with somebody outside you know, outside the industry is a reflection of us. I had a guy do some work on my house one time and he was uh, talking to me about his daughter. Like there's no way he ever wants his daughter to go into construction. And I was like, oh gosh, we're going to oh, talk, yeah. we're going to talk through this. <laughs> opportunity, opportunity, right? I was like, that's, I'm probably the wrong person to talk to about that yeah. topic. Um, but it was, you know, that's was that was his reality of how construction would treat a female. And I was able to give him a completely different perspective 
of this, this industry has been an incredible blessing in my life and yeah. I can't speak enough good things about it. Do we have our issues? Yes, but we're working, we're working on them and getting better. Yeah. Well, and like you said, I mean, those industries, you know, you know, they, they occur in almost any, you know, vertical right. that you go to. Right. So at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, that's, that, that's the reality of our life and you've got to have more, uh, committed leaders out there that say, Hey, this is what is no longer going to be tolerated. This is how we, uh, treat, you know, each other with respect across the board, right. You know, right. male to male, male to female, female to female. I think it's so important. It, what have, what have you seen in terms of the shift in terms of the, you know, because some of that is starting to you know, become a little bit more prevalent. Have you, have you seen, uh, you know, teams, changing in terms of the approach that they take and in, in ensuring that, you know, uh, everybody has a voice at the table, or I guess, you know, have you seen that in, 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 in environments that aren't shifting yet? You know, what do you tell um, young women on how to, or women in general, how to respond and, and, and make sure that they get their voice heard in those environments uh, where maybe they're not being included? I, I definitely have seen a shift. And I, I think, the the younger generations coming into the industry just aren't um, they're not settling for not being included or a certain type of environment They're They are forcing companies to have to change. And um, I think the majority of that is really, really good because companies need employees. Uh, we're in one of the tightest labor markets yeah. that we've ever seen um, historically as a country. And so these companies need individuals. And so they're having to listen to what these individuals want and they want training. They want professional development opportunities. They want um, a community around them. So they, they want all of these things. So companies are having to respond. We've seen training go through the roof here over the last you know seven years because employees are demanding it. And so yeah. we are having to respond as an industry, which is huge. I love it. That's great. Um, yeah. Because the majority of training is leadership training, which is how I think we're all going to get better. Um, and I, 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 I often have the conversation with, um, it's probably typically younger women in the industry mm -hmm. who don't really know how to impact that change or enact that change um, in their company. And I, to me, half of the way you do it is your approach is, yeah. Having a very candid but respectful conversation of um, what happened, you know, how you how you reacted to it and then what you would love to see. And then you have to hold people accountable. And I'm I'm a big fan of managing up. I've had to do yeah. it my entire career. And you manage you manage people beside you. You manage people below. You manage people above you. You have to manage your entire situation in a very, very respectful way. And, yeah. and that is something that I don't think is often taught is how to have those difficult conversations with respect because they're not easy. They are, right. they are really hard. Um, and I remember the first time I had one of those, I was probably five or six years out of, out of college, never done it before, but it thankfully went really well. And I walked away thinking I just grew like 10 years in maturity because <laughs> That's I, awesome. I faced something head on and it was really difficult, <laughs> but we got through it. And I grew and that was, that's just the, the encouragement that I give people is that's great. Um, try to see somebody else's perspective and have a very candid conversation. Yeah, no, that's, that's excellent advice. And like you said, it's, it's difficult, but um, imagine how rewarding it is to come across, you know, come on, come out the other side of that. Right. And, right. and to be able to come across as someone that's, you know, not only collaborative and respectful, but you know, trying to further the progress, you know, and, and, you know, interpersonal relationships or, you know, workplace conflicts aside, I mean, the, you, you know, you may not always have to have the opportunity to work with people you like, but you do want to make sure that they respect you. Yeah. You know? right. And that's, uh, that, that, uh, that's excellent advice. So I'm, I'm curious, like, let's go back to the guy working at your house. What did you say to him? I'm curious. <laughs> I, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm intrigued. I, I actually told him that I, I don't think he knew that I was in construction when he said that. And so I told him, you know, that it, it's actually being a female has, I think, helped my career yep. because I'm automatically different. When I when I walk into a meeting, when you walk onto a job site, you're different. And so um, what I told him was it's all it's been great for me. Like I stand out. I've been able to to go to several meetings that I probably wouldn't have been able to if I wasn't a female. Um, and I, you have to be technically sound 
But if you can present yourself well and be an, a huge asset to the team, as a female, you think differently. Yeah. So um, I've been able to be on teams for the simple fact that I think differently than pretty much everybody else that I work with. And so I've been able, you stand out. And so I've been able to kind of um, probably elevate my career faster uh, because, and I, it's not something that you ever want to take for granted, but it's right. just the reality of the situation that if I'm sitting around a table, my thoughts and my experiences are different than everybody else's. And so how can I use that to help elevate the team and elevate the company? Um, and so it, so we just kind of talked through that and uh, I, I told him, I was like, it's, it's, it's been an amazing career and I can't encourage young females enough to look at the industry. If you've got any bit of um, that in you where you want to see things built, you know, when you walk onto a job site every single day, it is a completely different than it was the day before. So yeah. materials come from all over the world to be put in place and create the built environment. It's just incredible to me. So if there's any bit of a desire there for any young women, I just, I love to encourage them to look at it as a, a potential career. Yeah. I had, a, I had a conversation with a young woman in the construct or that was considering construction as a, a career path. And I said, you know, how great would it be 40 years from now to be able to drive by, you know, with your family and say, I had a hand in building that. Right. Yep. And, you know, you, I think that it's interesting, you know, because I don't think people actually think about the long term and the legacy attached to the efforts that you put forward. But there's there's sure, sure there's a lot of careers that do have that attached to it. But the construction industry is clearly one of right. those. Right. You it know, um, you just have to go back to the pyramids to know that. Right. You exactly. know, at, the, at the end of the day that, you know, just the ability to say. I had a, I had a hand in that, you know, that, you know, I've got my, my blood, sweat and tears attached to that project. There's not a project that I've worked on that when we drive by, I don't say I helped build I, that. Like, yeah. and, and that's everybody in our industry. There is an innate pride that comes with construction. And I, I honestly think it's because you are building the buildings that everybody lives in and they work in and the hospitals and the schools. And I mean, you, there's just this pride that comes with building America. Um, and yeah. I also think that construction people are like the best people in the country. They've got good hearts. They are just good, solid people, um, kind of grassroots, just salt of the earth people. And yeah, so yeah. I think that contribute. I am partial though. I will admit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happen to agree with you. So I think, uh, I think you're, you're absolutely right there. Well, I'm curious from your perspective, and then I want to kind of talk about the association a little bit, but you know, from, um, from an education perspective and, and as a degree path, what do you think you know needs to shift there in terms of uh, highlighting those programs early in um, you know a, a young person's life to showcase that construction is a direction that they can handle or that they should consider? I mean, um, you know, what do we need to be doing in the middle schools and high schools into the college arena that needs to shift in order to to bring the kind of attention that this needs to be for young women? Man, I, I have so many thoughts here. I'll try to make them concise. Um, I think the first thing is we have to stop saying that there's only one path to higher education. Yep. And so, and that's, unfortunately, I feel like college has been, you know, pounded into everybody's brains from a very young age. And that works for a lot of people. And sure. so that's great. But there are lots of other higher education um, routes that I think need to be considered. And so, and then the other piece is just construction is often taught as the, if nothing else works in your life, you should go towards construction. Mm. And so, you know, it's the alternative career if you fail at everything else. And so that, and so, that, and half of that is our own fault yeah. construction wise. And half of it, I think is the perception that keeps um, historically happening. And so I think, Talking about construction, that's we we're in a ton of middle schools and high schools in the Dallas Fort Worth area just to show them that this is a great career that you should consider. And yeah. then also just the multiple ways you can get into it. So you can go be a marketing professional and end up at a construction company. You can go be an attorney and end up at a construction company. There's lots of different paths into our industry um, and just exposing them at a young age to start thinking about it. Uh, is is one um, method. And I think we've got to have some counselors, the high school counselors that are um, open to talking about trade schools. And there are a ton of opportunities for female in the trades um, schools that, you know, we're, you're not even 
considered. Um, I was, I'm on the board of a young women's leadership Academy in Fort Worth. And we had a couple of years ago, had a young female who went into welding to technical school. And it was just so exciting to, to have her. I mean, she was so proud of going into it and it just, it made my heart so happy because awesome. she has a phenomenal career now yeah. and has a skill that nobody can ever take away from her. And that yeah. was the best path for her. Um, you know, and so I think that is, that to me is where we've stumbled is said, everybody needs to fit in this certain box and everybody has one path that they need to take versus actually talking about all of the different methods. And then again, I, our industry has to do a better job of saying, these are all the ways to get into our industry. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, uh, you know, I think hopefully, you know, efforts like this podcast, you know, trying to put some attention on it, you know, finding some avenues for maybe us to work offline to bring that visibility up, maybe engage those conversations. You know, you, you, you need some, um, you know, you need someone like yourself that's kind of, you know, a uniter of the idea and the concept to help sell it into uh, those, you know, areas where, you know, the influence is being put. And I think, you know, like you said, I mean, that's a, hadn't even thought about the high school counselors, but, you know, they're all trying to help, you know, these, you know, these young people navigate what they should be doing, you know, and how those conversations need to be altered or adjusted a little bit, right? You know, right. in terms of look, rather than looking at this as a, you know, backup or maybe, you know, the, you know, potentially a, a back, um, uh, you know, kind of a backup plan or, or maybe like a, a last ditch kind of approach if, you know, certain elements aren't your thing and maybe a college isn't, you know, in your future, rather than look at it in, in a, you know, kind of through that like myopic lens, look at it as like, you know, hey, look how wide this industry is and how many different right. avenues like you're talking about with the young woman that became a, a welder. I mean, that's huge, right? You know, they need to see those kinds or hear those kinds of stories. Right. And I, um, I'll give props to the state of Texas because they brought back technical education. Yeah. Uh, in 2013, they, they said, we're going to have CTE programs in high school. And so it's great that in eighth grade, a student can choose, do I want to, do I want to study the more technical route in high school? Or do I know, you know, kind of the degree program that in college that I like to study. So they now have the option to actually study construction in high school, which has been a huge piece for our industry. Um, I mean, we've seen a, a change here in DFW of a lot of high school students are coming out with welding certifications with, you know, some plumbing experience. Like they've, they're coming out of high school better equipped to come into our industry. So we're trying to take advantage of that as much as we can. That's fantastic. What, what about at the higher educations, you know, whether it's the technical schools or um, the four, four year degree programs, what do you think needs to be done a little bit differently there? Is that, do they need to have more of an invested conversation with those students as well to be guiding and directing them? I know um, my son, you know, graduated from college and he's in his master's program and he's had advisors, but none of them really gave much by way of advice in terms of career path direction you need to be going. So what do you, what do you, what do you think about that? Um, I'm probably a little bit warped because we're really active with our, we have 17 colleges in a four state region that, that Texas supports. Excellent. So we're actually very active with those programs. And so we have a ton of interaction with the students studying construction oh, management. Great. And that's, that's actually what we work on with the professors is you can teach the technical side of it. Like that's, that's pretty standard. That's really not going to change that much. Technology will change it some, but the piece that we really want to work on is the interpersonal skills and the, the leadership skills, the things that will set them apart when everybody's technically aligned, what's going to set you apart. And those are those interpersonal yep. professional etiquette skills. And so that's the piece we've been working on with a ton of colleges is there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of competition out there. And so how do we make sure and set these people apart? And then when you come out of school if we've been working on this in school, then you're going to come out a little bit ahead of the game and then we can just continue to build on that. And so that has been our emphasis with the professors is I always thought when I graduated college, I know about 3% of what I should know. And that might even be an exaggeration. <laughs> I had a lot to learn. Yeah, um, still do every single day. But knowing that you're knowing that you're getting a solid base of technical stuff what else can you work on that will raise the level of professionals we have in the, in the construction industry? Oh, so. Yeah, I love that. Let me ask you, I'm, you know, just to deviate for just a second, but what's the best piece of advice that you were given coming into the industry? 
go. Gosh, I don't even, I don't even remember. It's hard to think. I graduated college in 05, so it's been a few years. Um, oh, you're still a baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I've got well, let me shift it then. How about if, if you were in front of, you know, like that, uh, that one gentleman that you were talking about, his daughter, or you were having an opportunity to talk to a, a young female that is considering construction as a career path, or maybe someone that has been in, you know, a different type of industry and is considering a, a pivot for their career. What would you, what piece of advice would you want to give them? I, the, the piece of advice that I typically give college students, um, when I'm able to visit with them is to, to stay humble and stay hungry. And I, I think that I just, I love, I think it's Lencioni that said it. And I just, I love that advice so much because yep. um, if you stay humble, you're always willing to learn. You're always willing to work a little harder. You're there's always something else you could go learn from a conversation or you can do a little bit better. There's always something to work on. Um, there's no resting of the laurels when you're, when you stay humble and then, when you're hungry, you always you always want to be better. You're always reading. You're always listening to podcasts. You're always having conversations, meeting new friends. And um, if you, I keep a little sticky note. I can see it right now. It says, "Be so good they can't ignore you." And that has been kind of my <laughs> motto. Of I love that. Yeah. You know what i I want to be I want to be the best person on the team, and not because I'm a female and I'm different. I just flat out want to be the best. Yeah. And so that is going to keep driving me. Um, every single day to be a better leader, to be a better wife, to be a better stepmother, mother, like it's going to drive me, um, if I stay humble and keep that as my, as my motto. And so I fail a lot of days. Um, but, but staying humble and staying hungry is advice that I always try to give of encouragement through life. I love that. I mean, that's excellent. I mean, you clearly have a fire in your belly. So where does that come from? <laughs> where does it come from? Yeah. Uh, gosh, uh, I don't, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I've always, I've just always wanted, um, I've always wanted to move mountains and impact people. Like it's just, I, I think we're given one life in the, on this earth and every single day I want to live it to its fullest. And um, I want to love people well. And I, I want them to remember our interaction is positive. And, and if we can push each other to be better, then I think that's going to be a ripple effect and a domino yeah. effect through this world. And this world needs more positivity and more love. Um, and so there's, I wake up every day with a sense of, I want to impact people positively and yeah. I can only do that if I'm on top of my game. Um, so, so that's, I, I'd say that's, it's just this inner, inner desire that I have. <laughs> I, I love it. I would say, you know, as an outsider's perspective, I mean, just off our one interaction after Gina put us in contact with one another, you clearly come across with that, you know, yeah. you, you are so Thank kind you. and so open to the idea of the podcast and what we're doing with this series. I mean, it really, really impressed me. And I appreciate, you know, your, your honesty on this for sure. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the association. I mean, you're, you're the top dog. I mean, president CEO, you're running it. Yeah. You're, you've, you're one of the largest associations in the state of Texas. And it sounds like you're extending those relationships well beyond the, the, the state. So tell us a little bit about that. And, and uh, you know, the, just kind of the background of the, the association, if you would. Sure. So Texas is actually very unique. We're the only joint chapter of Associated General Contractors, AGC, and Associated Builders and Contractors in the company or in the country, um, AGC and ABC. So we are joint. So when you join us, you're automatically a member of both, which, I, like I said, is the only one in the country. And our members pushed that about 13 years ago. They actually decided that it was better for the industry if we merged um, so we're very unique. Um, we have about 230 general contractors and specialty contractors that are members of our association, um, which makes us one of the largest in the country. And then the Dallas-Fort Worth construction market is the second largest in the country. So we just naturally, being where we're at, have a, a pretty large group um, of members. But it's, you know, being an association, I, I came from the industry. And when I came to the association, I full transparency, didn't know a ton about what an association did. Yeah. But what I realized is that it, it serves, it serves the industry. And so if we are, I always say we're leading from behind because we, our goal is to figure out what challenges is the industry dealing with and then how can we help them get past it? So how can we equip them better to deal with the barriers that they're facing as an industry? 
which means we have to be in front of them. We have to be having a ton of conversations. And the thing that I love about our board, which I realize is a very unique board, is it doesn't tell us to fit in this certain association box. It doesn't say right. you have to do these certain things. That's what an association does. They pretty much say, whatever you hear the industry needs, pivot and go do it. So um, that is, it's unique, I have found out. It's kind of the only thing that I, <laughs> I would probably pivot whether they told me I could or not. But um, uh, hopefully they would rein me back in if I got out of control. Uh, but it's it's unique because it's, we don't we don't fit in the same mold every single year. Yeah. It's we have a new issue. And so we need new training or um, when COVID first hit, I uh, we found out that the city of Dallas was going to do um, touchless thermometers on job sites. So my board um, gave me authority to go order 2000 touchless thermometers on a Sunday afternoon um, right before this was about to be enacted. And so, you know, they just they allow us to pivot on a dime. And so that's why I I know we serve the industry different here in DFW because we have strong relationships with them and and we're able to adjust quickly to what they're going through as an industry. That's great. What's the, you know, as the, you know, CEO of the association, what's the biggest uh, surprise that you've had since coming into the leadership role? Oh man, it's hard to even think about pre pre COVID. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say what, what I have loved about it is how many people rely on the association. And again, coming in from the industry, I didn't really know, I didn't understand that relationship quite like I do now. And how many people will have an issue with their company? And Texas was the first person they call. Yeah. Or they need a contact for someone. And we're the first person. So we're kind of this helpline for people in the industry. And I love it. And so, That's awesome. you know, the historical perspective at ABC and AGC, they set up that relationship with the industry of, if you need something, call us and we'll, yeah. we'll probably figure out how to do it. So that's been the thing that has been eye opening. And then trying to, you know, there's this trend for associations across the country of it's, it's a loyalty thing versus associations actually providing value. Yeah. So associations have been trying to shift to make sure they continue to provide that value so that they keep the loyalty. And that has been, we need to make sure with a DFW has been in a, a place where a lot of the a younger generation has taken over a ton of companies. So how does Texo continue to provide that, that service so that we're the, we're one of the first calls that, that they get. And they know that we're here to help them and serve them and make the people of their company better. So yeah. that has probably been the biggest eye opening experience I've, I've witnessed here. Well, you know, and you hit on it, right? You know, people join associations oftentimes, you know, you think about it and it's like, well, you know, you've got the trade shows, you've got some training opportunities, but the real magic, you know, the secret sauce of a good association is, right, the ability for me to have that expertise on speed dial, um, right. you know, those subject matter experts when I need them and really that community. And you guys have done a really good job from what I can tell, really fostering that, right? Not every association that's in the the construction space, have I seen that? Um, I think that you, you guys do a really good job of of really providing that that landing spot for no matter whether you're, you know, um, you know, not in a leadership role within an organization and you're just out in the field to, you know, trying to figure out, okay, I'm, I'm ready to, to do something different. I'm ready to, you know, um, you know, spread my wings and, you know, move into management or leadership capacity. Right. You're providing a lot of different opportunities for people to self-serve the, you know, and, and identify how they can educate themselves and, and, and become better contributors wherever they might be, whether it's their own, you know, organizations or just trying to, you know, climb the career ladder a little bit. I, you know, you have to give back to people in all areas, right? Both personally and professionally. So professionally, the training is, I don't want to say it's pretty standard, but you know, professionally, the training you're, you're going to get. The personal side is making sure you're spending time with your family. Are you reconnecting, you know, with your spouse? Um, what books are you reading? When's the last time you took vacation? And have fun. You know, yeah. I get... Um, Every morning there's a text about five to five thirty on whether or not I'm working out. And um, I, there's a group here this morning that's having breakfast back in our our kitchen before they do a podcast back there. And I, it's just a it's a fun environment um, of full of people that want want everybody to be better. 
Yeah. Because when they get better, I'm going to get better as long as I'm trying to, you know, hold myself accountable. And so it's just a, I, I think that environment has what has, it's it's overflowed into all parts of Texo, which I absolutely love. Um, yeah. We have our Young Constructors Council that has about 340 people in it now. It's grown wow. to 40-ish. So it's been awesome. But a couple of small groups will plan out the books that they're going to read and they'll bring them to me at the beginning of the year. Like, here's our eight books we're going to read this year. You know, you're going to read them with us. And I'm like, I, I just, I love it so much because everybody wants to be better. And I think when you find a group of people that want to be better, it just is uh, magnetic. And so, yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of touched on it, right? When you're reaching forward uh, for someone who's willing to help you out and you're reaching backwards to help someone who's, you know, going to need the help and, 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 you know, the benefit of your experience, that's such a huge factor. And I think when you can encompass that into uh, an organization like yours, it, it becomes the family, right? It becomes that right. community for which you belong. And that has such a huge impact, you know, to someone that's really trying to, uh, you know, further themselves and develop, you know, you know, more of that skill sets in, in, in really that sense of community that they need in order to stay in the industry, which I think is so critical. And like you said, you know, they're, the industry's shifting, you know, even yeah. though, you know, it's, it's a amazing uh, direction for someone to look at, there are still those challenges that, you know, you know, contractors are experiencing virtually every stakeholder on a project is experiencing where uh, there's not enough people, right. Not right. enough people applying. And, and so retention and making sure that they, you know, they feel like, you know, you're putting the best investment you can as an organization into your career path uh, to have that company be a part of the association has got to be a big value. I would think to retention, you know, I hope so. We try to, we try to push that a lot. And, and right now, I mean, Life has not been easy for several years and construction yeah. never stopped. And so you're dealing with stress of your families and, you know, kids being virtual and work stress because uh, working on a job site during COVID was not fun. Um, no. It was hard. And you need that community. Like companies, companies have got to be that group that is supporting people right now because there is a mental health issue um, yeah. all around. And yeah. You need, we need strong people and strong companies that are going to support each other and make sure they're taking vacations and make sure they're getting help if they need help. So we've, we've got to change and it's, it has been so encouraging to see companies do that for each other and, and companies helping companies. Like if one company does something, they're, they're not holding it as a trade secret. There's yeah. a ton of sharing that's happening that's with best practices. Um, and DFW is the market I know best and, and it, it's incredible to see that they're putting the health of people over um, trade secrets and companies. And um, it's just, it's been really encouraging to see how they've responded to, to what we're facing right now. Yeah. Well, like you said, a rising tide helps all boats. And so it right. makes sense to do it. And it's great that, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the approach that, companies might have taken before to, to hold on to those trade secrets and, and look at everybody else as a competitor, those things are starting to go away because that's, yeah. that's where the great collaboration and the great magic happens in those organizations is, you know, through the, the learning and best practice sharing with other organizations that have been there, done that, and are willing to, you know, help avoid some of the pitfalls <laughs> maybe right. they went through yeah. at the time. So, yeah. Well, so this this has been phenomenal. I really, really appreciate you being a part of the Women in Construction series. If you wanted to give a quick plug just for the association, tell everybody a little bit about it, um, you know, as to how to get involved and ultimately uh, any way that they might be able to either follow what the association is doing or follow what you're doing. Uh, we'll be happy to put these things up as links for everybody to follow. Awesome. So it's uh, just texoassociation.org. We're also all over social media. Um, LinkedIn is probably our, our best one or Instagram. Um, and we're all about um, unifying, advocating and advancing the construction industry. So anything we can do to make the people better. So we have a ton of committees and training opportunities and, and social activities. Um, that's we're all about people and all about making people better. So if you're in the industry and looking to be better, looking to connect with more people in the industry, I would I would love to to visit with you or, or somehow get you involved at Texo. So, and we're, we're doing stuff different every single year. So no telling what's going to happen next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, the, the future is bright with your leadership. I mean, you have uh, a really, really good approach to how you represent the association and yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm just very, very uh, proud to know you. I'm so grateful that Gina put us together and uh, I look forward to having another conversation at some point down the road. Thanks. Let, let me know. I'm always up for talking. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate it. Guys, thanks for joining us for another episode of Owner Insight Podcast. Be sure to check out uh, Melanie and the great work that they're doing at Texo. I, I know you will be impressed and you will want to get involved. And uh, we'll put those links up in the show notes as well. But until next time, we'll be back with another episode of the Owner Insight Podcast. 